What's up guys? In this video, I want to go through a easy, a medium, and a hard example of solving rational equations. And just because I'm such a nice guy, I'm even going to have a bonus for you at the end of this video. But let's go over how to solve rational equations, how to approach them, what to look out for. So therefore, if you're taking a test tomorrow, or maybe you have a quiz, or you're just trying to refresh your understanding of solving rational equations, you have three examples that's going to help you do just that. So the first one I want to go over is going to be our easy one. All right. And usually if I was like in the classroom, this would always be like the first example that, you know, a lot of times I go in or start with my students. Now, I know some of you might look at this example and say, cross multiply, cross multiply. And no, I don't want to do cross multiplication. You can, there's nothing wrong with doing cross multiplication. But I, what I want to do is show you a way to approach solving rational equations, because I cannot tell you how many times we do an example like this, I'll maybe show cross multiplication or a student does this, and then they use cross multiplication when you're not supposed to. So what I'm going to focus on doing is identifying what we call the LCD. Okay. I want to get rid of these fractions. I don't want to work with the fractions. I want to get rid of them. I do not like fractions. So what I want you to be able to see is like, all right, what is the smallest number term expression that my denominators are evenly going to divide into? So I have a nine and an X. Now the product or the LCD in this case is actually going to be pretty simple. It's simply just going to be a nine X. So what I'm going to do to get rid of my denominators is I'm going to multiply by a nine X times everything. Okay. A lot of times I'll put like brackets around it and say, I'm going to multiply everything by nine X. But here's the cool thing. What happens when you multiply everything by your least common denominator, nine evenly divides into nine one time, leave me here with an X times two X. So I'm going to get a two X squared. And that's the same thing. If you were to do the cross product X times two X is two X squared over here, my X's divide out, right? So I'm left with a two times a nine, which is equal to a 18 just like you were to go over here, right? I get it. Cross multiplication is faster. It's easier. But again, I'm showing you this I process of the LCD because that's exactly what we're going to need to do for our next two examples. So now I just need to go ahead and use my inverse operations. I'm going to divide by two on both sides. I get an X squared is equal to nine to undo the squaring. I'm going to take the square root. Just remember when you introduce a square root, you have to include both the plus and the minus of your square root. So I have two solutions, X equals plus or minus three. But just remember when we're dealing with rational um, equations, we need to make sure that those solutions are going to be verified. They're not going to be extraneous, meaning these are solutions to this equation. We want to make sure they satisfy our original equation. If they don't, we call them extraneous. How do we know if they don't satisfy our original equation? If they make our denominator equal to zero. But if I plug a three or a negative three into this denominator, you can see I'm not going to get zero, right? So therefore, these two solutions are verified and we're good to go. Now let's go and take a look at another one where students will say, oh, let's go ahead and use cross multiplication and they'll go ahead and get it all wrong. Okay. So cross multiplication, ladies and gentlemen, only works when you have a proportion, a ratio equal to a ratio. So it's great for those kind, but again, don't try to do it over here because it's not going to work. Uh, it's, well, <laughs> you'll do something, but you're not going to get the right answer. All right. So again, what I want you to focus on is identifying the LCD. Now this, the LCD was rather simple, right? It was just nine times X. And over here, a lot of times when we're thinking about like, I need X plus six to divide into, like, what does that divide into? And the same thing like X, what does X divide into? Well, if you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, the LCD is simply in this case, just going to be the product of X times X plus six. Because again, does X divide into that? Yes. Does X plus six divide into this expression? Yes. Since these are separated by multiplication, these two expressions are both evenly going to be divided by themselves. So what I, again, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to multiply everything times X times X plus six. And again, as long as you do that to every single expression that's separated by addition or this equal sign, you're not changing the solution. All right. So we're just going to multiply everything times X plus six. And what we're, that's going to do is we're going to get rid of the denominators, right? I want these denominators to divide into something. So I no longer have them. X plus six divides in with X plus six. Leave me now um, with just an X over here. My X's are going to divide into each other. Leave me with an X plus one times an X plus six. And over here, my X plus sixes are going to divide into each other. Leave me just with a 13 X. So let's go ahead and rewrite what we have. Cause that looks a little messy. So I have a X times one, which is just X over here. I'm going to have a X plus one times a X plus six. And then over here, I just have a nice little 13 X. All right. 
So it's a little bit more difficult, right? Now you can see I have a binomial, tons of binomial. Make sure we need to multiply that out, which you could use FOIL, you could use think about distributed property, whatever may be the case. Let's see, that's going to be X um, plus, let's see, this is gonna be an X squared. Again, I'm gonna do the math a little bit in the head. One times X is one X, uh, six times X is six X. That's gonna be a positive seven X plus six. So I did that math in my head, but you can multiply it all out on a side sheet of paper if you want. And that's gonna give me a 13 X. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this before I get to the next one. So X squared plus eight X plus six is equal to a 13 X. Notice I have a quadratic. When we have a quadratic, ladies and gentlemen, we need to set it equal to zero. Once we set it equal to zero, then we can use factoring and the zero product property, quadratic formula, or even if you're feeling like a little spicy, you can do completing the square. I know most students don't like doing completing the square, which I agree with you. It's not really useful for solving. I would prefer factoring or the quadratic formula, but it is an option. All right, so now I have the quadratic x squared minus five x plus six, and I'm gonna see, is this factorable? Can I? Multiply this. Yeah, I can do x minus six times a x plus one is equal to zero. So x equals a positive six and x equals a negative one, right? I think I did all that good. No, that is incorrect. <laughs> I factored that incorrectly. This needs to be an x minus three times an x minus two, right? Jeez, come on, Miss McLogan. X minus three times an x minus two is equal to zero. And the reason being is because again, negative six times positive one gives you a negative six, right? I was thinking I was trying to, I was trying to find an extraneous solution, but either way it wouldn't have worked. Um, so in my case, now I can use a zero product property, x minus three equals zero, x minus two is equal to zero. So x equals a positive three and x equals a positive two. But that's one thing students will look at. Once they understand how to find extraneous solutions, which spoiler alert, we'll have in the next example, they immediately look for it. and. So when you're thinking about, oh, I saw a six, like, let me try to create that six so it would be extraneous, you can quickly make mistakes. So try not, try not to focus on that. Try to focus on solving your equation and then going back and verifying, hey, does three or two make either of my denominators equal to zero? In this example, the answer is no, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so let's go through a hard one. This one is going to include an extraneous solution, at least if I did the math right, because um, I created this problem. And so I'm hoping it did. All right, x squared minus one. Whew. Okay, love this problem. There's so many good things we can talk about on this problem. So um, I have three x divided by x plus one equals two minus a two divided by x minus one. It's important to recognize here this integer is really can be written as a fraction with a denominator of one. And now what we need to do is identify what is our LCD. Now, if you go back to the original problem, you just say, oh, let's multiply the denominators. Second one, multiply the denominators, right? So this one, you might say, oh, I'm just gonna multiply the denominators. And that's a great way of thinking of things, especially when you're trying to find the LCD of polynomials. But we also wanna look for, is there something that they have in common? And to understand that, what we need to look at is simplifying our denominators if we can. Now, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, x squared minus one can be factored into an x minus one times an x plus one. This is important because look at my other denominator already includes an x plus one. So in this example, I'm actually not going to be multiplying my denominators. I'm simply just going to take this denominator, x minus one times x plus one. Because does x plus one evenly divide into this? Yes, it divides into the x plus one. Does x minus one times x plus one evenly divide into that? Yes, the exact same expression. Right? So not always do you have to go ahead and just multiply everything back out, okay? Um, look to see if you can factor a, um, factor the expression and see if that has anything in common. Wink, wink, it often does with your other denominators. Then you can just utilize that. Um, and then we have the one, but obviously one divides into everything. So again, going through what we're gonna do, we're gonna multiply everything times our LCD. Everything times the LCD, because what we wanna be able to do Oh, did I? I think I did make a problem. Oh, that's an x squared minus one. Okay, yeah. But also in my same case, I do not want to rewrite. Well, I'll do that in that factor form, but I'm not going to write this in that factor form. That's kind of weird, right? I'll just rewrite this as the x squared minus one. And then over here, I'm just going to write it as the x squared minus one as well, right? That's just the factored form. I just wanted you guys to kind of see that. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify things out. Those are gonna divide out, nothing divides out over here, and then everything divides out over here. So I am now left with 
a 3x times x minus 1 is equal to a 2 times x squared minus 1, and then minus a 2. All right? So if I distribute this, that's going to give me a 3x squared minus 3 equals a 2x squared minus 2 minus 2. Subtract the 2x squared, get that over to the same side. So I'm going to get, and then let's add, oh, we'll keep the 3 over there. And that's a minus 3, and that's a minus 4. Where did I have? I thought I worked it out. Where is that problem? Ah, I am sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I made a mistake. I knew I had something wrong. I looked at my scratch work, and I was like, I am an idiot. I made a mistake. Let's go ahead and change that to a 6. Okay? Um, so therefore, that should be a plus, and that's going to be a 6. So everything is going to divide out. But I was looking for, uh, this original problem did not have a um, extraneous solution. And so I wanted to change it to an extraneous solution. And I made a mistake on my math. So that's still an x plus 2. And that's going to be a plus 6. So that everything is still going to be working. But over here, we're actually going to have a positive 4. And you'll see why exactly what I'm looking for in this case. Um, so therefore, that is going to be a... Um, so I subtract a 2x, and that's going to be a plus 4. Okay, because I wanted to actually subtract the 4, and I made myself a negative. So now when I go ahead and subtract a 4 to both sides, I get a x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, run out a little bit of real estate, but I can factor this down. Let's go sideways here. I can factor that down into an x minus 4 times an x plus 1. Come on, Mr. McLogan. Okay, and then we'll set that equal to zero, right? So therefore I have an x minus four equals zero and a x plus one equals zero. And therefore x equals a positive four and x equals a negative one. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, recognize this. So these are two of the solutions, but these are the solutions to this, um, to this quadratic equation. When I plug back a four, we're good to go. But when I plug back a negative one, look at, Negative one plus one is zero. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call an extraneous solution, okay? It's a solution to this quadratic equation, but it's not a solution to the original equation. So it's always extremely important to make sure once you find your solutions to a rational equation, to plug it back in. Now let's go and talk about the bonus. So ladies and gentlemen, if you feel a little comfortable, but maybe you just want a little bit more practice um, going through this and, and you want to be able to see if you're getting these answers correct, well then I've created a free um, worksheet that you can go and work through. It's just six problems, but trust me, it's going to reinforce the skills that I went over through this video. I put the link down below so you can go ahead and download it and work on those examples all on your own. If you want just more videos on me going over rational equations like solving and graphing, then I have a full playlist for you also in the description down below. Or if you really like this easy, medium, hard examples and you want some more practice worksheets, then check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.